So we're going to be talking about interactive gaming toys. I'm with NPD. Um, some of you know who NPD is. We've been around since the 60s. Flower power, that stuff. Um, the uh, other folks of you might be in mobile and haven't heard of us as much. We're very much focused on the retail space, but we do have quite a bit in the works this year, actually, in mobile uh, tracking, longitudinal tracking. So if anybody's interested in that, just come talk to me. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. I'm here to talk about toys to life or interactive gaming toys. So I circled here uh, in terms of tracking the market. Uh, toys represents a $24 billion industry, and video games is right behind a $22.4 billion industry. Uh, and these are all of the industries that NPD is currently tracking. To set things up, I wanted to talk about, uh, this is from our Kids and Gaming uh, study, which actually is going to be coming out in a few weeks. Uh, but this is an incidence of gaming uh, among kids aged 2 to 17. Uh, it's remained relatively flat since 2011, mm -hmm. but it's flat at like 92%. Um, so it's really uh, a very big part of children's lives. Um, and then in terms of device usage, we might touch on this a bit. You know, mobile is definitely high up there at 63%, um, but consoles is also very high at 60%. Desktops and laptops have gone down um, considerably. Uh, and I think that's because of consolidations in virtual worlds, things like that. And also, a game like Minecraft, which was a PC bastion, as Mike was pointing out, it's on 360. That's the top um, platform for it right now. And when we look at our point of sale data for games, if there isn't a AAA game coming out, Minecraft's in the top five, like consistently. Uh, it's an incredibly powerful um, franchise on consoles. Um, within mobile devices, the trend for it actually is very flat. And what we've been seeing, not only with kids, but um, you know, the market as a whole, we just reached a saturation point. Everybody who has a mobile phone has a mobile phone. There's no getting new people on board. Um, so this is probably where it's going to stay for, for quite a while. So what are interactive gaming toys? Renee touched on this a bit. They are stuffed animals that play games with your kids. No. Um, they are these three right now, and we've got um, Lego Dimensions coming in as well. Someone brilliant at Activision um, said to themselves, how do I get kids to buy DLC? And Mike mentioned earlier, you know, oh, I spent $100 on this game. My mom never let me do it again. Well, Skylanders, you're spending way more than $100 in this game. The portal, the game, all the add-on figures. Because somebody at Activision said, parents are used to buying toys. If I said, hey, buy me a character in League of Legends or some mobile game where, you know, it's going to cost five bucks, no. Buy me this plastic figure. Oh, sure, let's do that. Let's put that in your stocking. Like, Parents can get behind that. There's a, 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 a lack of being able to binge purchase DLC. It's very controlled, and there's toys they can play with them before and after. And Skylanders built this franchise off of a character called Spyro, who most everybody probably didn't hear of before Skylanders came out. It wasn't a Sonic. It wasn't a Mario. It wasn't you know Steve from Minecraft. It was Spyro, a very small yet lovable the Vendi character that got brought over. And Skylanders has been great at innovating. They've done wonderful things in terms of adding vehicles and little trap crystals and things like that. And then Disney, who was having a lot of trouble in the video game space with things, games like Epic, Mickey, and whatnot, they said, hey, that's a great idea. We've got a huge roster of IP. Let's go out, Disney Infinity. And they did quite well with that. And then Nintendo as well, huge roster of IP. Let's go out, and they came out with these Amiibos. Um, in terms of how this has impacted the market, in 2012, um, the total market was Skylanders, and it was a $247 million market. Um, when we look at 2013, Infinity comes into the space, and it grows the market by 69%, and it didn't cannibalize it at all. Skylanders also grew 23% uh, that year. But in 2014, we all say, oh, has it peaked? Have we, have we reached the pinnacle here? Because the total market only grew 5%. Skylanders dropped 28%. And Infinity grew 69%. So what we're seeing here 
It was the beginning of an IP problem. Somebody comes into the store with their kid. Baymax, Captain America, Spider-Man, the Mickey Mouse, all of these cool, cool figures, and then you've got Rock Guy. But I don't know who that is. But yeah, there he is, and you can buy him if you want. Um, but Skylanders has done a tremendous job maintaining retail space. I went to a Toys R Us this weekend, preparation for this. They've got huge, huge Skylander displays compared to the foot space that, or the shelf space that uh, an Infinity or even an Amiibo has. So they are maintaining um, dominance uh, through volume and through affinity from the years before Infinity or Amiibo were even in the market. Uh, but year to date, it hasn't peaked because year to date we're 24% up uh, in terms of dollar spending for interactive gaming toys. And Skylanders has started to turn things around a bit there as well. What's the Amiibo number it's cut off? Uh, 27. Okay. Sorry. And this data is all from our point of sale retail data. You can take this to the bank. This is all that. Uh, so let's look at shift and show because it's all about who's winning and who's losing, right? Uh, so this is very competitive space. Uh, Lego Dimensions is going to really turn this up on its head. I don't understand how many more players can come into the space just from a retail shelf perspective. The, the, these items are in the electronic section with the video games. There's only so much shelf space. I don't know where they're going to put Lego Dimensions, but they're going to have to find space because I need to buy one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's definitely, uh, it's, it's a question mark. Uh, but so here, uh, in right before Infinity launches, you can see, right away. You can see here, um, Skylanders is king of the hill, and here comes Mickey and friends, and they take over a while, but, oh, Skylanders is back. Well, here comes Marble, and then Skylanders is back, and here comes, or maybe this is uh, Baymax, here comes Marble, uh, but then here starts to come into Amiibo in terms of dollar share and how they're taking over things, and what's really impressive is for Infinity, and for Skylanders, that's Xbox, that's PlayStation, that's PC. Mm. This is just Nintendo. Mm. Uh, and that's what they're doing to the market, which is, I always have to put the caveat in because it's really amazing when you think about they're on one platform. So current players uh, playing IGT. While children are the main player of the game, 90% have a child uh, playing currently, uh, half, 52%, indicate that adults in the household are playing as well. So this, is, I think, is something that's probably come across in the last five to 10 years, but gamers are now parents, and they want to play games with their kids. Right here, two kids, play all the time. Um, and you know, so this is an opportunity for them to you know, bond and, and, and do things with their kids, and especially when we're getting into these branded items I collected comics, I want to play Marvel, huge into Star Wars, let's go get Luke Skywalker, let's do this stuff. And that, I think, is where Skylanders is going to have a really big problem. Um, so much so that on the Wii platforms, they're actually taking Amiibos and making them playable in Skylander with uh, Donkey Kong and with Bowser. So they recognize that IP can drive a lot of this thing, but you know, making partnerships, I think, with like, Mattel and Hasbro could be a huge um, boon for, for uh, Skylanders. Uh, so uh, here we see, in terms of, I'm sorry, getting off on a tangent, but uh, we see this is the adults and the children. And I'm sure, uh, with the exception of Amiibo, which I'll get into, uh, this is kids and adults playing together. So adult player profile. Uh, adult players are more likely to be female, and they're also uh, likely to be young, with half considered being millennial age. Um, the other thing here is uh, collectibles. Uh, you know what? Let me go back to one slide. On the adult side, the reason why I mentioned Amiibo being, uh, I don't have a slide on it, but it does skew more adult. And the reason for that is Amiibos play across all games that are first party for Nintendo, or most all games. So they do have adults playing Smash Brothers, a very adult, uh, or young adult, uh, young adult, I mean like 20s, because uh, I'm 38. Uh, but uh, you have an adult player playing these in um, different games, whereas the Infinity and the Skylanders are those 
play pens, those toy boxes, very kid-centric. The Amiibos can go across lots of different types. Uh, collectibles. Now, I don't know if Amiibo did this on purpose, um, but and this study, the Interactive Gaming Center, was fielded in November, so we didn't have as much data on the collectibles for uh, Amiibo, but we know now that it's very much a collectible market for them. Uh, they used to have like Princess Peaches that were upside down in the box. People were grabbing them, and, you know, putting them away in storage. They've got lots of very limited run, rare um, IGTs that come out that people just snag and never take out of the box. So that's a big, big collectible market for Amiibos. But um, on the Disney and the Skylander side, uh, one third of parents tell us that their kids keep characters as collectibles as well. The original packaging is favored by kids, however, Skylanders players are twice as likely to take them out of the box than Disney Infinity. So along the lines of that DLC microtransaction, uh, here are some quotes from the study, but you know, some of the things that really pop out to me is favorite characters, special power upgrades, in-game activities, you know, the action is fantastic, the characters are really unique, provide hours of fun, they're very fun and provide lots of playtime, there's a good variety. Um, you know, a lot of these things, like variety uh, and, and new powers and things like that, that harkens to what we expect DLC to do in the game, changing it up. Um, so some of this is cut off, but uh, characters play outside of video games, so kids are definitely playing this uh, as a toy um, in addition to within the game, uh, as you can see here. Primary systems that they're playing IGTs on, it would be as you expect. Consoles are very much at the top of the list, um, followed by mobile devices and desktops. Um, and then lastly, portables. Portables is being driven largely by the Amigos that work with the 3DS. Um, that's everything for me.